Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. Well, it might be difficult for you to see, and I can't unfortunately show you for fear of giving away exactly where I am, but directly behind me is a raised area of agricultural land. And it sits way higher than the surrounding river and floodplain, and it is covered in crop marks. Crop marks which date to the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, and also medieval ploughing. There are suggestions that people have been living and potentially farming on this land for the best part of 4,000 years. So I'm hoping that there's maybe going to be one or two things to be found, and hopefully not aluminium cans. So who knows? I'm going to add a little video in, just a little, almost a disclaimer to make sure that people follow the letter of the law. This is not a scheduled site. I've done my research, I'll put up some photographs that show you what the site looks like with crop marks from the air. But please don't just assume because you get permission for land for going on land that you can automatically detect wherever you want. Always check in Scotland that it's not a scheduled monument. That's your responsibility as an honest and trustworthy metal detectorist. Right, the lesson is over. Let's go and uh, show you this little video and then go and see if there's some treasures to be found. This is just a little bit of good housekeeping about being a metal detectorist. The first thing I ever do when I get a new permission is go to this website, which is part of Historic Environment Scotland, and it gives a list of all the scheduled monuments in Scotland. Now I click the one to the right, search for a scheduled monument, and I'll put a link in the description to show you how to get to this website. Once it opens, I scroll down and I select search using the map. It's my preferred way to do it. This will then open up and I will close this little designation bar to the right. And there is Scotland. And I'm gonna zoom in on where I live, which is Perth in Perthshire, Scotland. So all you do is you start to zoom in on the map doing this as best as I can, bear with me. Um, but eventually there is Perth and you'll see all these little areas start to appear, some with uh, sort of hatched lines and others with um, red bars and so on around them. And that is showing you the scheduled monuments. I'll zoom out a little bit. You'll see this massive enclosure area. And this is a battle called the Battle of Tippermuir. And that was a conflict between the Marcus of Montrose and the Covenanters in the 1600s. So it was a major battle, around about 10,000 people. So that whole area is a scheduled monument. If I zoom in a little bit on this little village of Mevin, you'll see this little blue dot here is a scheduled building, a protected building. This little red area, uh, the little square there at Black Ruffin, if we click on that, then it tells you there that that is an enclosure. Now you can find out more about it by clicking on the link and it will explain what the site is. So if we scroll down, you will see it mentions that it's a prehistoric ritual and funeral enclosure and monument. So in other words, it is completely off limits. So you can see there's quite a number of them around. Here's another one, another enclosure. So you can click that and learn a little more information about the site. So this is always my first port of call whenever I get a new metal detecting permission. So make sure that you are detecting responsibly and that you are not detecting on a scheduled ancient monument. So these are today's fields. I've looked and none of them are scheduled so they are not protected sites and you can see medieval ploughing, Bronze Age enclosures and also the river and this is another part of the field in black and white and you can see all the enclosures, the houses, the field boundaries, all from the Bronze and Iron Age from 2000 to 4000 years ago. A large part of this field has been uh, what we call rapeseed, a very unfortunately named type of agricultural crop that's grown. Um, in the US, in North America, I think you call it canola oil, but it leaves behind these pretty stiff stalks and stems. 
So I'm hoping I can pick a path through them or in certain places scan above them without losing too much depth. But we'll see what happens. Well, I just checked my screen log for my last video that I recorded, the intro. It's taken me one hour and 17 minutes to get a diggable target. I hope it's worth the wait. 79.80. Whew. There's a lot of iron in the field, which I'm ignoring, because I know it's an Iron Age site, and a Bronze Age site, but iron in Scotland rarely survives a few hundred years. So, uh, it's not going to be old. The iron that's there... Well, we're out, and we've got something that may be white in colour. Which might be lead. And there it is. And that looks to me like lead. Has it got a purpose? I would say not. I would say it's just a random bit of lead. Well, that was a long, long hour and 17 minutes. All for that. Well, I'm in a totally different part of the field from where I started, so. Let's see if there's anything else to be had in this neck of the woods. What did I say earlier? You wait an hour and 17 minutes for a target. Two and a half minutes later. It's an 82. Half penny territory. Copper, lead territory. Hmm. Doesn't sound very good. I think it's going to be more lead. In fact, I, think I can see it. Right there. And that is indeed more lead. Get you in the shop might help. Yes. Well, two bits of lead. I did say it's a medieval site as well. So that's what you expect on medieval sites. Don't see any decoration. It's just a random little fragment. Ah, well, better than aluminium. A third target in five minutes. Just shows you I'm in the busier side of the field now. It's quite a crisp target. Let's get all this stocks out of the way. Oh, it's vanished. It's there. Oh, there it is there. It's been right on the surface. It's a wee lug. A wee bit of metal, I think. Right, what have we got? Well, it's maybe had a, a bit of iron. Very, very heavy. Might actually be bronze. It might be bronze. Well, yeah, it looks. Has it been gilded or is that just the way it's corroded? Maybe it's just the way it's corroded, but it almost looks like a piece of bronze with a bit of iron stuck in it. Not sure on that one. Let's get my wee cloth, give it a wee dry, see if there's anything obvious. Part of an ancient vessel handle. Well, it's definitely got iron in it, look at the colour. So, that end doesn't have iron in it actually, so what do you think to that? Is that some sort of ancient Bronze Age something or other? Hmm, not sure about that one, but I'll let me know. In the comments below. It'd be nice if it was thousands of years old. Right, let's see if there's anything else. Another target does sound a bit tinny. 78. Still 78. Could be more lead, you know. What's that? That's aluminium. It is the dreaded Bronze Age Aluminium. Aquil. This one didn't sound good at all, as ever. If in doubt, dig it out and look what's popped out. Is it a fishing weight or is it a musket ball? I think it could be a musket ball. It is. And it's a whopper. That is an absolute whopper. That is heavy, heavy, heavy. Wow. 
that coming at you would tear a hole right through you. My goodness, that must weigh an ounce. What a size. Well, as ever, musket balls, so um, there's a good, normally a good bit of age to them. We started to move over to cartridge bullets in the early 1800s, so it probably predates, say, 1820, 1830, or thereabouts, and uh, yeah, could well be from the 1600s or thereabouts, but uh, that's a nice find. That is a whopper, absolute huge musket ball. We've got a springy, if that's a word, jumpy, 83, let's get these bits of stock out of the way, that one out as well, ah, go, might be some lead, maybe, let's try and get a plug out, Right, we're out. We are out. We might have a clod shot as well. Everyone likes a clod shot. Oh, I'm getting tired. Mm, maybe not a clod shot. No, I think it is in here. Nope, it's there. It's over here. Don't know where this is. Right, we're in here somewhere. We're in here. No. There it is. It's bronze. It's a lump of bronze. Well, we're on a Bronze Age site, so to be expected, I suppose. I think it's a wee bit of a wee bit of metal working slag. A little, uh, a little leftover bit from someone pouring molten bronze. It's got that greeny colour to it, but yeah, I think that's exactly what we've got. Who knows? Could be thousands of years old, but we'll never know. Could be on to a wee bit more lead. 72, 73, I don't think it's going to be deep. Sounds... Fairly shallow, quite a strong signal, and the sun is out again. Whew, tell you what, it suddenly gets hot when the sun comes out. Can't often say that about Scotland. You know, we're just somewhere. There we are. Ah, aluminium. Darn. In between the stalks, I've sniffed out another one. Let's just get these roots out of the way. Pretty solid 70. Right about there, methinks. Yes. A nice ear blowing target. Consistent, solid 70. What have we got? We've got a clod shot. We've got a clod shot. That looks like a bit of green. That is a bit of green. It's got a little bit of a profile on it. I'll tell you what. Oh. Oh. That might be a tip. That might be a tip off of a a dagger or a sword. Look at the profile of it. See it's got that central bit in the middle, the high circle. What do they call that? The tange or something like that, isn't it? The tang, I can't remember. Oh, that could be, you know. We could be on the Bronze Age. We could be on the Bronze Age. Let's see. Well, that is green as you like. That is bronze to the maximum. 
it's stable, don't worry the surface isn't coming off. It is stable, it's a lot better doing that than brushing it. It's in a field that gets rained on of course. So I don't think I'm doing it any harm. That is, oh, that's got to be something interesting. That has got to be something interesting. Almost looks a bit like a, an arrow sort of shape, but it's not going to be an arrow. They were using flint arrows in the Bronze Age. Right. Let's get it a wee rub-a-dub. My first real artefact that's been inside. Well, that is... That is something, I tell you. That is something. Try and get you out the wind, but keep you in the sun. That does look a bit like a blade. Does it not? It really does. Could it be? Well, I think it could be. Definitely when you look at it from there, that to me looks like a fragment of a tip of a spear or a dagger or maybe even a sword. A fragment of a sword. Well, what do you think? Bronze Age treasure. I think it has to be. I can't think what else it could be. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. That could be three or four thousand years old. Whew. As ever, you find something good, spiral out from it. So far, nothing until now. Similar readout, pretty solid 77, and, uh, and you never know. Could we have another lump of bronze if we did have? That would be pretty amazing. Bit deeper. Other bit came out in the first spade full, but this is a wee bit further down. Well, now it's gone completely different. Sky high 81. Sounds like aluminium to me. I think it is. What's that there? That is. What's, what is that? It is. Don't believe it. It's a Bronze Age Coke can. Damn. Well, I moved off the higher ground down into the lower ground. This came through 77. To be honest, quite expecting a... Uh, a tin can all day long, and it's lead. It's lead with a purpose. So it's rounded at each end, and it's got a little groove in it. So now, if it wasn't rounded at each end, i.e. the groove doesn't carry it right to the end, I would have thought it's for, for window glass. But the fact that the groove stops short, I don't think it is window glass. So what do you think? Lead? Old? don't think it was bent originally, I think it's been bent by the plough, I think it would have been straight. So what do you think of that? Could it be something old? And if so, what could it be? Well let me know in the comments below. A bit of a ropey signal until it came out, and when it came out I thought, my god it's a vessel handle, but it's not, it's copper, not bronze, and it's a bit of water pipe, it's been crushed at both ends. Aquil. Wow, I tell you, other than iron targets, which I'm not digging, unless they sound, you know, big or substantial, then uh, it really is devoid of signals, this field. That's an hour since I had my last non-iron target. Or, yeah, non-iron target. So, it's a 63, maybe a bit of lead or a button. So let's break her open and see. Where's it gone? Oh, it's in here. And it's the dreaded aluminium. So you wait all that time for that. What a nightmare. I'm making my way back to the car and look, there is the tree-lined road where I found the silver sixpence on the opposite side, just about where I am actually. 
So that leads to a Georgian sort of manor house and uh, it's quite grassy up this side of the field. And we've got a 94. Could be a bottle top. Could be aluminium. Could be a spendable. Could be silver. I doubt it. But at least it's not deep. Oh, I can see it already. It's copper pipe. It's more copper pipe. I'm going to start a scrap metal business at this rate. And more copper pipe. Copper pipe within a copper pipe, by the looks of it. Oh well. If it's not been copper pipe, it's been aluminium. But... That's a very crisp 88. Come on, give us a coin. Give us a coin. It's been a long afternoon. Yes, I've got a few nice things and potentially something from the Bronze Age. But, not been a lot of holes dug. Certainly not quality um, holes. Well, obviously if that item is Bronze Age then, oh, then you can't get much better quality than that. However, what I mean is the difference between this field and the other has been incredible. What is going on here? There it is. It's the dreaded washer. Ah well. Better than aluminium. Only just. Right next to this road, it's been aluminium, aluminium, aluminium. I just said to myself, I'm not filming this one. If I dig it and it's more aluminium, I'm calling it time. I'm just a few hundred yards from the car. And I've only went and got a coin. I think it could be a spendable. Oh, huh, maybe not. Maybe not. Well, all is not lost. It's copper. And I tell you what, it could be Georgian. Or it could be even earlier. It could be a Bobby. Which would be a Scottish sixpence. Well, and there you go. Never give up hope. Well, I did. But uh, I'm knackered. Absolutely exhausted. I'm dead on my feet. Don't know that I'm going to get anything off this, but we'll give it a wee dry. We'll not wet it, because it's copper. I'll give it a wee rub-a-dub with the old thumb, and we'll get back to you in a wee minute. Well, you're going to have to just trust me on this. I think it's going to be impossible to pick up detail on this camera phone. But, mm, looks to me... Like a head facing to the left hand side. And I can see up here. E-T-H-I-B. Et Hibernia. Which is and Ireland. And I think on this side there would be a thistle with a crown above it. And it would say Nemo Me Impuni Lassesit. Around the edge. And I believe it's a copper bobby. A sixpence. And I think it's Charles II. I know that's a hell of a lot of stretching. But I'm just going by experience. You might just be able to see a head looking to the left. But definitely et Hibernia. I'll put up a, a picture right now of what it should look like. And hopefully, you could maybe see something there. But it's a Bobby, which was a copper sixpence. And Charles II was on the throne, restored in 1660, and lived until 1685. He oversaw a period in Scottish history called the Killing Times, when a group of Presbyterians called the Covenanters rebelled against interference in the in the uh, the church in Scotland because for a time Scotland became a, a dominantly Anglican well I say Anglican um, like the Diet Coke of Protestantism as I always call it or Presbyterianism which is Episcopal so Episcopalianism 
So yeah, Charles II, I do believe the killing times when tens of thousands of people were killed and persecuted for their religious beliefs. Excellent. Well, we finally got there in the end. And that little tuft there is where the bobby came from. We've got another signal here. It's not sounding great initially, but now it's saying 86. It could be aluminium, or it could be a penny. Oh, there's something. Ha ha! Well, it's not a penny. It's a... It's not another bobby, is it? Well, it's a coin. Two coins in a flash. Right, this one looks kind of different from the last. Similar size, but the thickness and the shape very different. Right, I'll give this a wee rub-a-dub and get back to you. Well, I've given it the bendy thumb treatment and you've got the bobby next to it for reference and it's a different size. It's also very different in thickness. Well, mostly. Uh, I think this is Georgian. Maybe a farthing or a halfpenny, but it's copper. Maybe George the First. It's a bit irregular in shape, size, thickness. So if it is George the First, then it's sometime around about 1714 to 1726, there or thereabouts. But still, two coins in a flash. Amazing how quickly your luck can change. Well, this is the extent of the best finds from the afternoon. I think I actually found that in the morning. Just put it in the wrong place. But three coins, so two of them came just in the final ten minutes, so that was lucky. Um, musket ball, a threepence from George VI. Probably a George the First halfpenny or farthing. And a Charles the Second, what I suspect is a bobby, a sixpence. A curious bit of bronze, which has got a bit of iron coming out one end. May or may not be tinned or gilded on the outside. See that silveriness? A lump of lead with an interesting groove in it. A piece of bronze, slag, metal working. The buckle, I think I got that earlier. But the star of the show, I think, is here. And it's the profile that does it for me. To me... Now that is the tip of a spear, or a sword, or like a rapier, or a dagger. And I think that that is Bronze Age. Which would mean it's probably somewhere around three or 4,000 years old. So let me know your comments, your thoughts even, in the comments below. Fantastic. We'll see what the museum has to say. Well then, I'm hiding behind the van trying to stay out the wind, it is whipped up. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, a pretty excellent morning and afternoon's detecting. And hopefully you'll agree. Always great to get some silver. And who knows, maybe a three and a half to four thousand year old Bronze Age fragment of a sword or a dagger. Or uh, a rapier of some description. So I cannot complain whatsoever. So as I say, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, then please hit that button and hopefully we'll see you on the next dig. So take care and thanks for watching.